Hello! In this video, I'm going to go over two examples of animal projects. So these are examples that meet the requirements that are listed on the NEO assignment. So I'm going to start by showing you the first one and running the program, and then we'll walk through the code together and then do the same thing for the second example. All right, so here is the first example, and this is a simple program where we have the bunny is our animal, and then this carrot is just part of um, the background that's just drawn on there. So I'm going to use the arrow keys, the left and right arrow keys, to move this bunny. So I'll move left, and you can see that as it moves left, the bunny shrinks. And as I move right, it shrinks some more until I get to the carrot, and as it eats the carrot, it grows. But then it stops growing. It won't get bigger than this size because getting too much bigger than this would just look a little bit weird. And then again, as we move, it gets smaller. But again, it's not going to get smaller than a certain size. So any smaller than this would look a little odd. So this is our example. It's got movement and it's got the action of eating a carrot and of shrinking down as it moves. So now we're going to go through the code and see how that works. So I'm going to start in the bunny class. So I've made a tab here called bunny. My class name matches that. And then first thing is we list our fields. So we've got the belly size. Remember the belly size changes as it moves and as it eats the carrot. So that's a property that is going to be changing about the bunny. So I created a field for it. Then we've got the fur color, and this is just going to be gray, but if I created another bunny, I might want to have it be a different color, so I created a field for that. And then the X and Y position, we need to have fields for those, because as the bunny moves, its position is going to change. So then we've got our constructor, and we've got one parameter for every field, and we use those parameters to set our fields. So for that, the syntax always goes field equals sign parameter. So that gives the value of the parameter to the field. The next thing we've got in here is our functions. And functions are for actions. And one of the things that we do with our bunny is we draw it on the screen. So we have a function called draw bunny. And I use the fur color field to set the fill. And then I use the X position and Y position to tell it where to draw all these shapes. And then I use this belly size field to determine the size of them. And that's especially important when I draw that ellipse for the belly. I'm scaling up the belly size by about 1.5 and drawing it at the position given by the X position, Y position. And then all the other pieces of the bunny, the paws, the ears, the tail, everything is based off of that position and size of the belly. So these are just our shapes and colors for drawing the bunny. So right here, this curly bracket ends that draw bunny function. And then we have our other actions. So one function for each action move right. Our bunny needs to be able to move right, so there is a function for that. We increase the x position. The bunny needs to have its belly shrink when it moves, but I don't want the belly to get too small because that would look a little bit weird. So I have the smallest size is 30. So if the belly size is bigger than 30, we decrease it by 0 0.2. But if it's not bigger than 30, then we're not going to decrease the belly size. We're just going to let it sit there right at 30. Our move left function looks very similar. We're just decreasing x position instead of increasing it. And again, checking to make sure that our belly is bigger than our minimum size. And if it is, we're decreasing the size. Our next action is eating food. So our bunny needs to be able to eat the carrot. And when it does, we want the belly to grow. But again, we have a maximum size, so we only increase the size of the belly if the belly is less than 80 pixels. So if it's less than our maximum size, we increase our field. And then our last function in here is a reporter function. So reporter functions don't have the word void, 
Instead, they have the type of data that they're going to be returning or reporting. So in this case, we're going to return an integer. So we put int here. Name of our function is get x position. And we're returning x position, which is our field. So remember, at the top, we have our field called x position. So all this is doing is it's returning this value. And we'll see how we can use this function in the main tab in just a minute. All right, so that's our bunny class. We've got our fields, our constructor, and our functions. So in our main tab, at the top, we have a global variable called b. The data type is bunny. In setup, we're calling our bunny constructor. So we're setting the belly size to 50. So remember, b size, that's our belly size. That's our first parameter. Here's the color, and then its starting location is 200, 250. So once we've created our bunny object, then we can make it appear on the screen and move around. And all of that is going to happen in the draw function because this needs to repeat over and over again so we can interact with our bunny and make it move. So when I press the arrow keys, I want the bunny moving left or right according to which key I pressed. So I've got if key pressed. And then our arrow keys are kind of special. They are called coded keys. Normally we can say something like if key equals A or if key equals X, depending on the letter that we pressed. But there isn't a way to say arrow by just typing in a single letter, so instead we just say the key is coded. There are several coded keys, including the arrow keys. So then we have to check the key code variable, and that is a special variable just like key is a special variable, and it's automatically set depending on which coded key we pressed. So if the key code equals right, that means I pressed the right arrow key, and I want to call my move right function. So remember in bunny, we have the move right function right here. So we want to run this code for our bunny when we press the right arrow key. So our variable name is b, so we write b dot move right to tell it to move our bunny B to the right. Similarly for the key code for left, if I press the left arrow key, then we want to move the bunny to the left. So that handles our movement. Now we also need to eat, but we only want to eat if we're next to the carrot. So I know that I drew my carrot near this location between 250 and 290 on the x-axis. So I'm using my get x position. This is my reporter function from Bunny. So this reports back the x position of the bunny. So I'm asking to get the x position of bunny B. If it's bigger than 250 and it's less than 290, then I know my bunny is near the carrot and it should be eating. So we do b.eatfood. So, so far we've done movement, we've done eating, and now we're ready to make something show up on the screen. So we add our background, I draw in the carrot, and then we tell it to draw the bunny. So again, that's b, because that's our variable name, dot, and our function name is draw bunny. This draw carrot function is just letting me draw a carrot wherever I told it to draw, so at 300, 240 and we just draw some, some shapes to draw the carrot. So that is one example of the animal project. And now I'm going to move over to another example and show you that one as well. So this one is going to have an octopus in it. And instead of changing the size, our octopus is going to change color. So I'm going to show you this just by running the program, and then we'll go through the code. All right, so here's our octopus, kind of a simple, funny-looking little guy. And octopus is going to change color. So in the ocean, when an octopus gets near something, sometimes it might change color to blend in and be harder to see. 
So I'm going to be able to move this octopus around using my arrow keys. And this time I'm allowing it to go up and down as well as left and right. And when our octopus gets near one of these rocks, it's going to change color to be camouflaged and blend in. So similarly, when we go up here to the gray one, it's going to blend in and it'll be harder to see in the ocean. So that is the second example. And now let's go through our code. So I'm going to start in the octopus class. So again, the tab name matches my class name, which also matches my constructor name. Our fields at the top are our properties. So octopus has a color and it has a position. Those are the things that will change about the octopus. We set the starting color and starting position in our constructor. And then just like the bunny example, we need to be able to draw our animal. So I have a draw octopus function here. You can use my color to set the fill use X position and Y position to draw my shapes. And then this loop just draws the lines for all the arms on the octopus. All right, then we've got move right. Looks really similar to your car move right and the bunny move right. Just increase X position. Move left, we're decreasing X position. Moving up, we decrease Y position. And move down, we increase Y position. Another action that our octopus needs to do is change color. So I've got a change color function here. And I've got a parameter to say what the new color is, because it doesn't always change to the same color. So when we call change color, we'll have to put in the parentheses the color that it's changing to. And then we use that parameter to set our color field. So remember, color, CLR, is our field up here at the top. All right, and then our last two functions are get X position and get Y position. And those are both reporters. Just like the bunny, we had get X position. That was a reporter function. And they report back the position, so either the X or Y position of the octopus. So now let's take a look at our main tab. I've got an octopus object called O. I call the constructor. Here's the starting color and the starting position for the octopus. In the draw function, I again have the if key pressed, check if the key is coded because I'm using my arrow keys to move. And then I've got my if statement for each arrow key. And this time I'm also including up and down. So I'm calling the appropriate function based on the key. And then again, like Bunny, we need to draw our background. And then I'm drawing the rocks, and we'll get into that in just a minute. We also need to draw the octopus. So all of this code we'll go over in just a minute, but it's handling the color change. And then once we've set the color, we draw the octopus. So that's calling our draw octopus function that was over in our octopus tab. Now for this, I could have done all of the rocks by hand and put all the code in here. But the rocks look really similar and there's a lot of code that I would be copying and pasting for the two rocks. So instead of doing lots of copy paste, I decided to make a rock class. So here's our rock class. And the properties of a rock are it has a position and a color. Constructor to set those. A draw rock function to make it show up. So then we have this reporter function called isNear. And this is to determine if something is near the rock. So we need to know where that something is. That's why we have these x and y parameters. And what this does is it checks if the distance between the given location, x, y, and the rock's location, so we use our fields, if the distance between those points is less than 125 pixels, then we're going to say that this point is near our rock and we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So this is reporting a Boolean. So it's reporting true or reporting false. 
and we use this in our main tab to check if our octopus is near one of the rocks. So to check if the octopus is near the gray rock, and the gray rock was created up here. We say if gray rock dot is near, so we call this function from our rock class. And we have to tell it where our octopus is. So O is our octopus object. And we're calling our git x position. This reports the x position of the octopus. And then o dot get y position reports the y position of our octopus. So we pass that position to the is near function and it will report true or false based on whether or not the octopus is near to the gray rock. If it is near, then we tell our octopus to change color and it should change to the color of the gray rock. So we call our get color function from gray rock. So in our rock class, we have a reporter called get color and it returns the color field from the rock. So this returns the color of our gray rock and it passes it to the change color function in the octopus class. We have a very similar if statement here for the green rock. So check if our octopus is near the green rock, and if it is, get the green rock's color and tell our octopus to change color to that color. And then of course we end by drawing our octopus. All right, so this shows an example of using two different classes. You only need to write one class for your animal project. You need to have the class for the animal that you're choosing to make. And you can pick whatever animal you want. You need to have at least one object of that class. So here's the object of that class. O is an object of the octopus class. And then you need to have movement, whether that's arrow keys, WASD keys, using the mouse or some other method. And then some other actions. So in our bunny example, the action was changing its size when it ate and changing its size when it moved. In the octopus example, the action is changing color. So you can get creative with what actions you want to have happen and how you want to move your animal. So that is the end of our video on how to do an animal class.